Hello, and welcome to another episode of my Coffee Break Art. Here you'll find snippets about art to watch in your coffee break. As I sit in my somewhat cluttered office, I'm surrounded by paintings on the walls, on the floor, everywhere. On the wall directly in front of me are two by the Welsh artist Sue Fielding. I find them uplifting and they remind me uh, of a few years ago. I was in the Tate specifically to look at the Mark Rothko paintings, which he painted in the late 50s for the uh, Four Seasons restaurant in New York. These are a series of huge abstract paintings, very powerful and moody, displayed as he intended in a room with subtle lighting. Looking closely at one of the paintings, as you do, I noticed uh, that where the paint had run, the direction of the runs was upwards. In other words, the painting had been painted the other way up. So my next stop was the gallery library to the book about the paintings and the image of the painting in question confirmed my impression. Although, to be honest, with these magnificent paintings, it doesn't really matter which way up they are seen from. However, being me, I told the curator about my observations, but he, and uh, later in an exchange of emails with the gallery officials, all of whom told me that the painting was most certainly the correct way up. How dare I, simple member of the public, question them. This is not the first time the Tate Modern have been in trouble with abstract works by Mark Rothko. When his Black on Maroon series were on display in London, one consisted of two stripes on a black background, and it had been hung so that the stripes were vertical. But the location of Rothko's signature on the back indicated that the stripes should be horizontal. This orientation has never been resolved, and over the years, the painting has been displayed both ways, and the controversy about their correct orientation continues. But putting pictures the wrong way up is not the sole prerogative of the Tate, and I thought it might be an interesting subject for a video. One of the best-known bloopers was in 1961 when New York's Museum of Modern Art opened its doors to an exhibition about Henry Matisse and his large-cut gouaches. Unaware that one of the works, Le Bateau, was hanging upside down. The air wasn't discovered for 47 days, unnoticed by curators and museum staff as well as some 116,000 visitors, among them Matisse's son Pierre, who was an art dealer. Then one day, after three visits to the show, a lady called Guinevere Habert became convinced that the painting had been flipped, and she bought the exhibition catalogue um, where the comparison proved her hunch. The gallery was not exactly receptive, blaming the catalogue printers. Undeterred, Habert contacted the Times, who printed a story about the unfortunate heir, uh, one day after the gallery finally flipped the painting the right side up. They did have some excuse, as the label on the painting's reverse side was upside down, and existing screw holes suggested that it had been hung incorrectly a few times before. In 2015, the Whitney Museum of American Art exhibited a Jackson Pollock drip painting for the institution's inaugural exhibition, America is Hard to See. It was hung vertically, although shown horizontally in the artist's original catalogue and the museum's collection handbook. The gallery claimed that this was intentional based on photographs of the painting, installed that way the same year it was made. At a 1915 art exhibition in Grand Rapids, Michigan, the Blue Pool by George Bellows was hung in a conspicuous location. 
Several artists gave talks at the event in which they referred to it and they described it as modern in treatment. But it was only after three weeks that the exhibitors realised they'd hung the painting upside down. When righted, the seemingly abstract swatches of colour transformed into a more familiar scene of a pool of water surrounded by rocks. Edwin Dickinson completed his painting, The Fossil Hunters, between 1926 and 1928. It was then displayed at various locations, including the Carnegie International Exhibition of 1928 the Pennsylvania Academy and the New York Academy of Design. At the latter event, it actually won a prize of $500. Then, in 1929, somebody finally realised that all the time it had been hung horizontally and Dickerson had intended it to be hung vertically. In other words, it was sideways. As part of the 1951 Festival of Britain. The Arts Council of Great Britain organised a show which included Autumn Landscape by William Gear, which actually went on to win a £500 prize, although the Daily Mail, who else, described the work as a jam pot thrown on canvas. Although due to a printer's error, it was actually shown in their catalogue upside down. During a 1952 exhibition of modern art at the City Museum in Amsterdam, two schoolboys noticed something odd about Paul Klee's 1938 painting, Lodus Martis. The artist's signature was upside down and in the wrong corner. They pointed this out to the museum authorities, who had the goodness to admit that the painting had been hung upside down. In 1956... Anna P. Baker's work, High Frequency Ping, won the top prize of $1,500 at the Chicago Art Institute's annual exhibition. But a couple of students noticed that her signature on the painting was upside down, prompting concerns that the work had been hung incorrectly. The exhibitors confessed that they weren't sure which was the right way round, but said they had asked the contestants to label their paintings in the upper left-hand corner on the back, and they'd use this as a guide when hanging works. Baker herself actually assured them that they had put the painting up the right way round, explaining that she signed it on the back before actually painting it, and she eventually decided it looked better this way round. Sam Himmerflad's painting, Mosaic, won honours in 1957, exhibition hosted by Chicago Art Institute. But when he visited the exhibition, he discovered that his painting had been hung sideways. He confessed he hadn't been sure whether to reveal the error, because they might not have thought it as highly if they knew it should be hung the other way, so they left it as it was. While visiting the National Art Gallery in London, a 15-year-old schoolgirl, Jean Cockburn, noticed that Van Gogh's 1889 painting Grass and Butterflies was hung upside down. She pointed this out to an attendant who insisted, of course, it couldn't be so. But when she told other museum officials, they checked, realised she was right. True to form, the officials insisted that it wasn't their fault, it had only been hung that way for 15 minutes. They said it had been taken away to be photographed and the workmen who'd rehung it weren't familiar with Van Gogh's works. In 1968, a group of reporters were waiting in the lobby outside President Lyndon Johnson's office admiring a painting there called Autumn Fields, a watercolour by American artist Mark Toby. One newsman noticed that the artist's signature was upside down and so after a week, during which various members of the White House staff weighed in with their own opinions, consensus was finally reached that the painting was indeed upside down. The deciding factor was the observation that in every place where the watercolours had run, they were running uphill. 
painting was eventually turned round, but it has since been exhibited in Japan, where apparently it was also hung upside down. Georgia O'Keeffe completed her painting, Oriental Poppies, in 1928, and the University of Minnesota Art Museum acquired it in 1937. The painting was uh, then displayed vertically at the museum for decades, until in 1986, the museum's director discovered that the original accession records indicated it was supposed to be hung horizontally. Another of Georgia O'Keeffe's paintings, called the Lawrence Tree, depicts a tall tree that stood on the author D.H. Lawrence's ranch in New Mexico. This work was displayed with the trunk of the tree rising from the bottom right-hand corner, but evidence emerged in uh, 1989 indicating this was upside down. A photo was found showing the painting hung by O'Keeffe herself, with the trunk descending from the top left-hand corner, as well as a letter from her where she complained that galleries were hanging the work upside down. The significance of the orientation was that the artist had intended the painting to show how the tree might look to someone lying on the ground beneath it, gazing up at the stars. Finally, a couple of cinema references, which of course are fictional. The 1933 film Girl Without a Room illustrates Hollywood's attitude to abstract art at the time. It tells the story of a young painter from Tennessee who won an art scholarship to Paris. He got mixed up with Bohemians, abandoned his traditional style of art, then ended up winning the top prize in a Paris show, even though his painting was hung upside down. In the 2006 black comedy My Scary Girl, the girl, Mina, claims that she majored in fine arts but then we find out that she has never heard of the artist Mondrian, who would have been a fixture in any modern art history class. Later, Dai Wu, the male star, looks aghast at a reproduction of a Mondrian painting hanging on the wall of her apartment. He takes it down, turns it upside down, hangs it back on the wall. Painting, of course, was hung upside down. That's probably enough about upside down paintings. Thank you for watching this Coffee Break Art and I hope you enjoyed it. This is a small YouTube channel for people interested in art. You can help me get more views by clicking on the subscribe button and I would appreciate this. Please don't hesitate to add a comment below and I'll see you next time.